All right. Well, if people just stop walking in front of the camera over here, I'll be able to uh, show you another transition. It doesn't have to be people walking in front of the camera. Anytime you want to use an object to mask over a transition, you're going to be using about the same technique. So the idea is that, and I'm sure you've seen this in CSI and other such heinous programs, where, you know, oh, this is like a... I'm just going to pan by this car or something like that, and then, you know, it looks like that car was in the other scene, and that they, you know, panned between the two scenes and that kind of thing, so. Also, when you have crowd shots, people walk in front of the crowd, or you're in a moving shot, or you're in a car, or you're doing something like that, it's pretty easy to come up with some object that clears the whole frame and allows you to uh, hide a wipe in there, which is pretty much what you're doing. You are... The idea is that you're going to put something that appears natural in both scenes to hide the wipe between the two of them. So, let's get that going on. Um, step one is import your footage. And now, let's see, let's bring this into a comp here. So, let's just, you know, nix out some parts that are different. So, I use... Uh, Command Shift D to split layers. So this will be like our after part. Let's name that after. And let's see here. Da -da 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 All right. See, this is probably good enough for the before. La 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 la. Let's get it right before I stand up and go make myself look like an idiot. Blam. This is the before. And now we will find a part in which I walk across the scene. Here we go. I'm going to start walking. Here it comes. So we want, this will be our cover. And so we'll uh, start the trim there. There we go. Walk across, big dumb idiot, strolling along. There we go. Don't worry about the shadow. That's pretty inconsequential. Just clear the frame. He's gone. And that is that. Okay, so we have all the parts. We have the before, the after. Stick the before and the after right smack together. Blam, blam. And in fact, you're going to need enough overlap between the two of them as you have a cover shot, right? So, keep zooming in. So basically, you're gonna need the cover shot and these these three to make like a sandwich except that I guess these would be the bread and this is the meat outside of the bread I call it an inside out sandwich sometimes I have bread in between two steaks which is a great messy sandwich because I eat rare steaks um, I'm sure you could find them if you apply yourself they're not like the most rare drop of all steaks, but, you know, it's just messy. And I find that when I'm at parties and they give me steaks to eat, that it's pretty difficult for me to just stand around with a plate and cut it, so I just walk around with it in my hand. Like that episode of Friends, Joey was doing that. I wish I was Joey, he seemed to have a good life. Anywho, uh, now, the thing you're gonna have to do with this cover shot is to somehow isolate the object that you've got going on here. And a good way to actually do that is, you know, I'm gonna use the roto brush for this. I'm using the roto brush, and you should too. It's pretty great, and it goes by really fast. And now I'm using the roto brush, so you can kiss my doo doo doo. As you can see, the edges are pretty rough, so you can go in here and just refine that up a little bit. You know, all those fun things. Increase that a little bit. A little bit higher quality out of it. Something to that effect, you know. Try not to make it too weird, I guess. What is wrong with some of this? You know, either way, I guess might go by fast enough that nobody notices. Um, <laughs> and because of the focal length, you can always fast blur a little bit, and people won't really notice. 
you know, just kind of cover up your mistakes as best you can. Yeah, that looks like it's covering up most of my mistakes. Um, what else can you do? You can kind of just take this thing and uh, scale it up just slightly, put it more in front of the camera. Um, another thing you're going to want to do is to uh, tint it down a little bit, because when you're out of the desired range there, you kind of want to rob it of some of its color. And you want to actually make it a little bit darker because your subject is supposed to be lit and not the thing walking in front of it, you know? So, you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. Hey, buddy! See ya! Okay, so once you've got this thing going past, you want to take your uh, pen tool here and you want to just mask out that line that is uh, moving across and M we're going to be keyframing that mask path here let's just do ba 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 do ba do 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 and then just make sure that you keyframe and move the mask along so it remains hidden behind the strange leg thing that's moving across this weird leg creature thing Lumbering across the field. Dee 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 dee. And then it's all the way across there. <laughs> so there we go, pretty much done. Take this mask here. Uh, I set a point at the start and end of it. Select, select all the mask. Generate, copy, go to this layer below, paste. Oh look, now they've got the same mask. Well that's okay, because now I set this one to subtract and BOOM! Oh, there goes the dynamite. That is something else. So, it's just that simple. To break it down for you, you have one thing that covers your edit, and your two layers here. Depending on how complex this is, you could probably even get away with a well-keyed, or uh, yeah, a well-keyframed uh, linear wipe going across. And, you know, this will allow you to, for example, only export this cover here with an alpha channel and then give it to an editor and tell him to do it, you know, and problem solved. So, as you can see, on this side is one scene, on this side another. They both happen to share the same mask, and uh, it allows you to save a bit of time right there just by changing one to subtract, leave one as add. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, there are many ways to pull this cover off. Um, you could manually mask it, you can roto brush it, you can difference mat, but that becomes challenging in a uh, dense scene. If you're feeling especially bold on the day, you could use a green screen. If you don't have access to that, then do it this way. Um, the manual uh, brush, the manual masking works best when you're using something solid like a lamp post or something like that to go through or past. Um, just make sure that you feather things, make sure you blur them, make sure you obscure them and darken them and all that good stuff and help yourself out. Uh, I suppose that's it for this tutorial. Uh, my name's Evan Abrams. This has been how to skillfully or, you know, crudely at least cover up edits using uh, cover shots and it can add a little bit of a little bit of style to what you're doing out there. Not that I don't think you're stylish, but um, everybody could use an edge. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah, so I'm Evan Abrams. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at uh, EC Abrams. Um, uh, subscribe to me on here, and you know, check it out. I got a bunch of other tutorials coming out pretty soon, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you ever have any comments or questions, just leave them in the uh, comment space below, and I will respond to you as best I am able. And uh, yeah, thanks, and I will see you around the internet.